probably you might recognize and might not, and it's just jam packed full of you know people such as like John Cicada, you know, and like you know Art, you know. It's like who else? Would Rico have? Suave. Rico Suave, you know, like, <laughs> the lead singer of uh, Everclear. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. we um, and then, uh, Shifty, Shifty from Crazy Town, yeah. you know, uh, like. It, it, and this person who's like, um, gosh, who is this chick? I don't know if you know her name. It's like, your wife? Yes, mm -hmm. and my wife, Lauren, is actually in the movie. Very happy for that as well. And we, we actually, uh, we disguised her just enough so when people watch it, they're like, why is she in the movie? <laughs> you can't recognize her. <laughs> no, I'm, su I'm super excited. Like, like Lauren actually is funny. I, I said this. She's actually a better actress than I am an actor. So I, I kind of put her in the movie to kind of make up for my bad acting. <laughs> I have to tell you though, you had Clint Eastwood down. I, I watched enough of it when I was little. I tell you are you. like this strong, silent type. You guys, he doesn't have to say a whole lot. He's got it all right there. You yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. They, they were calling it the Thousand Mile Stare or something. I don't know. I was just in my head the whole time. But it was, it, honestly, it's jam-packed full of people, and, and honestly, people who really, do, I mean, Joey, I, just so you know, I think Joey's on his way right now, so he's like, he just landed, and did he text you? No, no, he's, he's driving over. He's driving over, so he might make it in time to say what's up as well, so, but it's out of the box, it's going to blow your mind, it's going to be something that you did not ever expect. From what I could see right now, from the editing and everything, I am just blown away. It's, I'm dumbfounded. I can't believe it. So did you great. guys have like a holy shit moment while you were filming? Because I know I had a few. Um, I think I had two. Uh, one would be my, I guess, death scene was... You died? No, oh, it's not really a spoiler because it's called Dead Set. Yeah, true that. <laughs> and I am it's the like bad guy, does. so obviously, you know. But then, and then also I think just, I don't know, just kind of all of us sitting in that one cabin having lunch, sitting around and just talking about the film, talking about ideas, helping each other with our you know roles and our parts. That was just kind of that holy shit moment. Like, wow, we're actually doing this. Like, this is not a joke. This is for real. Yeah. And... Again, I had so much fun. My, so much fun. My holy shit moment was... Um, holy shit uh, moment? Did I say, no. Oh shit, sorry, oh no, shit. holy shit, sorry. Oh shit moment was um, basically when, you know, when it started nine years ago and we started writing this down, I jotted it down, I had this idea, and then actually taking it, you know, eight, nine years later, and then seeing like, the characters come to life, seeing the town come to life, seeing the setting, everything that we that was imagined actually coming to life, that was the oh shit moment for me, and that it was really happening. And honestly, I gotta thank you know the asylum for for um, for helping me make that dream come true because they took a chance and a shot, you know, on us um, when we really were never proven have ever done this before. So. You know, I love those guys at the asylum. You know, you've seen their Sharknado movies. You've seen everything they do. They don't give a damn what anybody thinks out there. And in a lot of ways, that's that's kind of how we are. The Backstreet Boys, the boy bands, Carrie. We don't care what you think. You don't have to watch the movie. <laughs> but if you do, I think you're going to enjoy it. Yes, and you should watch because it is. Remember, it's just a week away on April Fool's Day. And again, hashtag Dead7, hashtag Fanic16. Please, let's get it going for this movie online, okay? I'm going to check and see what's going on with Mr. Joey Fatone. But please, I mean, tell us a little bit more. Um, was anybody a practical joker on set? Kidding me? In the middle of No, the actually, movie. I wasn't. It was Joey. That Joey, was for sure. And he's not here to defend oh, himself, so I'm going to call him out. Okay. Usually it's... You, but you know, Joey definitely took the uh, torch from you this time. It's, it's tough. Was, Nick was Joey, very busy actually okay. creating. Yeah, the Nick movie. was just trying to stay focused and stay in character the whole time, and Joey was just in and out all day, every day. Here, here's the thing: out. my holy shit moment was every night, pretty much after we would wrap, we would all end up in Joey's hotel room. Yeah. Like everyone. All of us, the crew. 
Dreamcast playing this weird video game thing from our phones, like a guessing game or whatever it was, and literally till like four or five in the morning, just hanging out in Joey's room. Yeah, but there was a moment, one in particular, where you started showing videos of your cover songs or something, and Joey started showing videos of him, his cover songs, and it was like this boy band duel that was happening. <laughs> Jeff Timmons was sitting on the couch next to me, and I just kept looking around like, I, I don't even know what planet I'm on right now. <laughs> it was a riot. I mean, and you guys gotta understand that, like, the town and the place that we chose to shoot this in, there was, like, barely anything there, and they were awesome, like, very accommodating to us, but the hotel we were staying in, we stayed there for, what, three weeks? It was the best Western, right? Yeah, it was the best Western. The nicest, best Western in town, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Not after we were yeah, there. There was, yeah. there was one, one day that I came back, I actually wrapped early, and I came back to find a sliced tomato on my bed. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Don't know why it was there, how it got there, but there was a little tomato just chilling on my bed. <laughs> There is some weird things going on in that hotel. It yeah. smelled. It smelled weird. Oh my god, it was so funny. Yeah. And you know what's interesting? So you, you guys know Jeff Timmons. He's in pretty good shape, right? So every single morning, um, I would <laughs> we'd wake up and we we'd we we'd, we'd, we'd have to walk by this like really small gym. I mean, literally had like one treadmill. You know, the one yeah, treadmill. half a treadmill. One, one half a treadmill and maybe like a dumbbell. Okay. And so I'm walking by, and I swear, Jeff, every single morning, was in that morning. gym, like Rocky, with his, like, his hoodie on, just like, like, literally this fast. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you guys can look at Jeff. Jeff is, you know, he was is, is huge. And he's built, I'm like, what, why are you even bothered, dude? Like, oh my God, so funny. But he was the only one for, I think he was the smartest one because he actually sweat out all the booze we were drinking the night before. I just did. We did play one really bad joke on him the very first dinner night with the uh, steak and the seafood. We were getting ice cream and Jeff was saying he's on this diet, he doesn't want to eat ice cream, and we're like, come on, just do it once. And I gave him what looked like ice cream, but it was a big scoop of butter. <laughs> and he just took a big spoonful and ate it. And I'm just like, sorry. <laughs> so not sorry. Pretty much after that, we told him that every single thing that was to offer had kale in it so that he would eat. Yeah. Well, kale the ice cream was kale. I love that they can't defend themselves right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. That is so great. So, hey, why don't we move on? We're actually going to do a few fan questions. Because yes. I know you have a huge line 